Hey, this is Nature from Tinga Cavalry. You are listening to 19.3 WMSC. Tanger Calvary, uh, there with their eponymous track, Tanger Calvary, off of uh, last year's uh, Blood Sacrifice Shaman uh, LP, a instrumental, all instrumental LP, which uh, features songs such as that one that originally came out in a demo uh, released in 2010, but was re-recorded for that release. All right, so without further delay, here's that interview I conducted with Nature of Tanger Calvary. Interview launch. So, uh, joining me here today is uh, Nature, uh, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, uh, Gangan Baigal of the Mongolian folk metal band Tenger Calvary. Uh, thanks for uh, taking the time out to uh, talk with us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here. All right. Uh, now, uh, folk metal, it's uh, very much a thing, and there's quite a few bands that combine pagan, uh, Middle Eastern, or Latin elements, but... Uh, you don't hear a lot of bands who uh, combine Far Eastern sounds with heavier music. Uh, what inspired you to start a project combining both Mongolian and Northern uh, Chinese traditional music with metal? Um, actually, uh, I was because back in the years when I was still uh, living in Beijing, mm. uh, I played in a couple of like uh, traditional heavy metal band, and uh, you know that's like a starting point when I start to explore different sounds. And then I gradually just got a little bit tired of the. Uh, traditional sound because you know like there are so many great bands out there i want to create something more uh personal more unique and you know because i had been listening to like mongolian uh folk instrument and chinese folk instrument uh album for a long time uh during my high school time and i started to practice that uh back in the few years before i played the metal band so i was thinking you know i would love to combine them together and also, by the time I played the, this kind of create, started to create this kind of music, uh, there are some bands, some Mongolian folk artists, they already started to experience this kind of fusion. So I, I had this idea of if you make this more heavier than what they were doing, just rather than just pop rock or light rock sound, if we make it into a metal, uh, that would be really cool. So, you know, that's more like, you know, I experienced and tried different sounds. And also I listened to, you know, all those Viking folk metal band, you know, the way they express themselves through folk influence, you know, is sort of, you know, cross over a lot of influence on me. Hmm. Yeah, because it is a really awesome combination. So so recently you moved from China to New York and are currently studying film scoring at NYU. Uh, that, that's correct, right? Uh, actually, I graduated last year in May. Oh. I graduated for, yeah, pretty long time. Okay. Uh, have you done any uh, film scoring before that? Uh, yes, actually, uh, I did feel a couple of like very small, low budget like indie film, uh, my most like documentary stuff, uh, kind of thing. But it, it definitely uh, influenced my music, you know. And uh, when you came here, uh, you also uh, rebuilt the band from scratch with uh, local musicians. And exactly. uh, how did you get together with these uh, new members? Um, it's very interesting. I think it's like I really get locked to get in touch with the right people because, you know, all the band members in my band now, like, they're all American citizens, but they all, we all some, somehow, you know, connect with the same Central Asian nomadic culture. And I, I reached out to my bass player. He's from, he was, like, originally from Uzbekistan, and, uh, but he's an American citizen. He, he played, you know, like, death metal scene in New York for a long time. And I just randomly, you know, sent people a message on a, like, a musician website. And he got the message. He got interested in it. And that's, like, how it started. And then he helped me find another drummer who is a Ukrainian. Or, like, you know, like, he, he was from Ukraine. So, like, Ukraine. So, it's like all the Siberia country, Central Asian country, you know. So, we sort of just all understand this culture. Like, oh, yeah, like, nomadic folk metal, Mongolian folk metal. We, we know what it is. So it's, it's easy for, for us to play this kind of music, even though we're in America. Nice. And uh, have you uh, experienced a difference between uh, playing shows over in uh, China than playing here in the U.S.? Is there more restrictions over there? Or is that just a common misconception a lot of people have? Um, I think there is, like, you can, like, this restriction back in... Uh, China is is not as extreme as people imagine here, 
but it's you can you can feel that the government like all the stuff they still have this feeling underneath you know you know there's something going on but it's not like that crazy anymore but here you know i i, I feel like there's more definitely more artistic freedom and you know you can express your ideology you know they can explore different ethnicities without being bothered you know hmm. and uh do you have a personal preference as to uh playing uh, venues over here as uh, compared to over there? Um, I think I like to play here. Hmm. Uh, is there any difference in the uh, places you uh, you play here compared to over there? Are the, uh, are the spaces, uh, is it more, um, do you play more uh, halls over here compared to over there? Or is it more bars and uh, that kind of scene? You mean in America? Yeah, in America. Uh, I think we played like some some venues, some bars. Like mm -hmm. all we played all like like sort of like half and half, maybe maybe more bars, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but because we're gonna go on tour very soon next month, uh, this month actually, uh, I think we have both sides. We have some some bars, some big bars, and some small venue. So sort of like that, you know. Yeah, it uh, says on the schedule that you're gonna be playing Webster Hall uh, Saturday, June fourth. Right, 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 and uh, that's a that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty uh, popular venue here in the in uh, New York City. Right, right, and also I think the other venue we're gonna play is in uh, Los Angeles. That's uh, the Viper Room. That's a pretty big venue too. I never been been to the. I mean, I've been to LA before, but I never been to a Viper Room. But people keep telling me that's a good venue, so I'm really looking forward to it. Nice, uh, and also speaking of other huge venues, actually. Uh, Last uh, December, you uh, played at Carnegie Hall, which is actually uh, not a place a lot of metal bands uh, find themselves playing in. Uh, do you think uh, playing there opened yourself to a new audience and found a new following over here? Uh, yeah, that, that was a like, very fun experience because, you know, it's like a concert hall. Mostly people enjoy you know, classical music, folk music. But I think when we played there, we target the both market, you know, like the the, la the first part of the show is like very Mongolian folk oriented. The last part of the show is very, uh, very folk, uh, more heavy rock like influence. So definitely like we explored the, the like, you know, a different market and uh, we got like different people coming to the show. Not just like, but you can still see like there's a metalhead wearing metal t-shirts sitting in the Carnegie Hall. But also, you know, you see like people wearing like white shirt to sit down to enjoy music. So it's, it's, a, it's a very fun experience. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, now well, after the Carnegie Hall show and everything, do you think you uh, do you think uh, do you have more fans stateside or uh, back in the Far East in China, or do you think it's about equal uh, throughout the world? I think it's mostly in America, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, also well, with that, before uh, the show, you also uh, released. In the last quarter of uh, last year, a um, a instrumental album, uh, "Blood Sacrifice Shaman." Uh, what inspired right. the idea for a uh, instrumental album? Uh, I think I just sort of get tired of screaming death vocal, you know, like because I I keep been listening to folk and film music for a long time. I sort of just a little bit like tired of my old death vocal singing style. So I was thinking, <laughs> you know what? I still want to make new, new music or like sort of still creating stuff, but I don't want to repeat this pattern anymore. So, you know, well, like, let me just do a folk metal soundtrack album, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and it worked really well. It's a, it's an awesome LP. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, you also have a new EP out now, uh, mountainside as well. Exactly. That, yep. uh, came out, uh, March 31st. Yeah. And before uh, before we wrap things up, you have a tour starting uh, May fifteenth, right? Yeah. And Tanker Calvary uh, will be playing in the New York City area uh, at uh, Webster Hall Saturday, June fourth. I'd like to thank Nature uh, once again for uh, joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. You too, man. Uh, as uh, was said in the interview, uh, I'd like to thank them for uh, that interview. They'll be playing Saturday, June 4th at uh, Webster Hall. Uh, I believe tickets are still available. Uh, get them while you can. I'm going to play another one 
uh, from them right now. This is Mountainside. <laughs> That was uh, Ten Calvary with Mountainside off their uh, new Mountainside EP. I'm going to cut to a quick commercial right now, but uh, after that, I got some uh, more music uh, coming up after this break. 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. 